Hello and welcome to Fridays with Brandon. Today what we're going to be talking about is the II900, II910 air leak detectors, kind of talking a little bit about what they are and why, really why somebody would buy it. We will show you how they work, but the real reason is why do customers buy this? This is not a cheap tool. This is, uh, you know, you're going to be spending between twenty and thirty thousand dollars for a tool like this. And why are customers, why are industrial customers, willing to spend that kind of money on such a small tool when they could go, you know, buy a used truck or something instead? So, the I nine hundred, I nine ten, the way they look. This is kind of what it looks like, and kind of what are these things? This this is an array of microphones. I'll show it kind of up close. So you see this array of microphones, and each microphone is an ultrasonic uh, microphone. So you think about traditional ultrasound, you'd have a single microphone with like a, um, a satellite dish or something, and you'd be scanning an area with your you know, Princess Leia earmuffs on, and you'd be going over an area, and as you hear a uh, sound that you're listening for, for in a very specific frequency, you get closer and closer to the air leak or vibration or whatever you're trying to listen for. In this case, let's talk about air leaks. So you get closer and closer to the air leak till finally you can pinpoint exactly where it is. Now, the, one of the difficulties with traditional ultrasound is normally you need about two days of training to be proficient at it. And unfortunately, moving forward, uh, after that guy or girl gets trained, then two or three years later they get promoted or they leave the company and now you have a fifteen thousand dollar piece of equipment that's very nice but everybody's afraid to use it because nobody's been trained on it and you either have to pay for somebody else to go to training or more likely than not what I hear from a lot of customers is nobody uses it this is not that way you can turn this on for the first time hand this to an intern and they can do it that is one of the main reasons people are willing to spend the money on this is they need to find air leaks and they don't want to have to train people on it. They want an easy to use out of the box tool. So ease of use is a huge selling point with this. The other thing is, we already said, finding air leaks. Well, why do people care about finding air leaks? Air leaks are very, very expensive. To make compressed air or to buy compressed gas is very, very expensive. So depending on where you are and how much your utility bill or how much electricity is, your, um, your your making of compressed air typically is the number one energy user in an industrial facility is making the compressed air for the facility the typical facility can save up to 20 or the typical facility can save 25 percent of the compressed air that they're currently making if they don't have an active program where they're finding and fixing leaks with a tool like this they can find and fix leaks and reduce their total air consumption that they are total air they have to produce by 25% just by finding and fixing those little leaks that don't seem like they're making a big difference. The other thing is with a tool like this, you can use it in a loud area where it, you have to have earplugs, but because we're listening at a very specific frequency, we can still find those air leaks. And I'll show it actually will put color on the screen exactly where it hears the leak. I'll show that here in a second. Other things that are reasons why people care about uh, these kind of tools and finding air leaks is downtime. Sometimes places like corrugator plants, paper mills, they have big machines that run on compressed air and if they have too much leaking of that air, it can shut the whole operation down. Those are extremely expensive. Downtime is extremely expensive. This can find those air leaks before they get so severe that it can shut anything down. So, uh, downtime is another reason. And then another aspect that we see quite a few of these getting sold for is the airline industry. If you are running uh, large freight planes or uh, airlines, all of these jets have compressed air everywhere in them. And being able to find and identify leaks is huge. Another thing they'll do is they'll pressurize the fuselage and then scan the outside of the plane and see if there's any leaks around any of the seals of the doors and different things to be able to find those leaks. So those are kind of some highlights on big applications that people use to find these things. Now, one application that's unique to the II-910 that the II-900 does not have is it can find partial discharge. So that if you 
have a big industrial facility and you go, hey, we already need to find and fix our air leaks, why not spend a few more dollars? And then now we can also look at our medium and high voltage switch yards or um, substations that are part of our responsibility and we can identify partial discharge or corona. Uh, this gives you the ability to have a little bit more versatile and when you spend that more a uh, little bit more money you also have the ability to have higher sensitivity with the i910 seven to ten times more sensitive than the i900 so if you're looking for vacuum leaks or um, very very small air leaks that maybe the i900 didn't see you're gonna have a better chance of finding it with the i910 so that's kind of why you would choose between the two um, what comes with it? That's a good question. Comes with two of these batteries. You can see these batteries, they come with a smart gauge. You push the test button and you see how much gas you have left. Comes with a hard case. Comes with the camera itself and some straps and different things. Uh, the software is included as well. So you can make reports, to tell you uh, where your air leaks are and present those to a customer or present those to the team that might be actually fixing the leaks. Um, anyways, let's jump into it and let you guys see how this actually works, if I can do this. So... Okay, so now I've got this set up where you can see the screen of the camera, and I've got this can of compressed air, and I'm going to put it over here, and you're going to find I... You will not... I can't even hear the leak. It's that small but you can see it right on the screen. You can see it following the end of that straw. Another thing I can do is I can go over here, make it a little bit bigger. Let me move, get something that will reflect a little bit better. And I can give you a reflection. So this would be an example of an echo. This comes back to the ease of use with these tools. The fact that you can see that echo and it's so obvious, that is really helpful, whereas with comp with a traditional ultrasound, when you hear an echo, it's hard to tell. Is that an echo or is that the source of the leak? Whereas with the II-900 or the II-910, if you see a leak in the middle of a concrete floor or middle of an I-beam, you're confident that that's not actually leaking air, so you know that you need to kind of see where that hit and where it bounced and you can go find the actual leak. So if I see it, you know, over here, then I want to, and I, I see it on an I-beam, then I want to look over there and I would just turn the camera and then see the actual source of the leak. So this is kind of an overview. I've already done an unboxing and whatnot about this before, but I hope this is helpful. If you have specific questions about the I-900 or the I-910, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know what I'm thinking about all things fluke. And have a great weekend. Thanks. Take care.